Michael, thank you for joining me for the first time. And I've had a couple of people that have said that they want to learn more about Builder Gel. So I'm going to do another set. But if you're just starting out, you might be like me and you don't want to buy these great big sets of things or spend a lot of money. So I'm going to try and use everything um, bar my top coats because they're the ones I've got. Uh, everything else, all these, I'm going to try and use stuff from Amazon. So, the builder gels that I've got, because I am limited, I've got this pink here, which is uh, base one builder gel, uh, and it does self-level. I've put this on, that's first uh, application of it, and you can see it's not super, super flat. Can we zoom in? It's not super flat, but it's not bad. Uh, I don't think it's bad at all. So a bit of filing, quite light filing, and uh, we'll have done on that one. Um, and then on these, I'm going to try and do different techniques on each hand. So I've got, I'm going to use the pink. I've got this white, which is also off eBay. And uh, this is um, Victoria Win number two, extremely white. Which is that. It's very nice and thick. And then for clear, because I want to do some encapsulating, I've got this Bren Mole. Uh, between you and me, I think it's Savalan Bren Mole anyway. Um, and this is the clear one. Look at it. Can you see? Yeah, so it's definitely a self leveling. And then I've got this Mylar that was in the set that I bought. So I'm going to try and encapsulate a bit of this Mylar, do a bit of marbling, and also show you that, yes, you can do a French with um, these. And I've just tipped that top over. I forgot I'd, I forgot I'd already tipped them out into it. So let's uh, shift them for a second. Uh, yeah, tip a few bits into there. <laughs> and then when you've knocked it over, put it back in again. Uh, so that's that. Uh, brushes wise, now believe it or not, this number four brush, um, I've seen some on the Mac Art site that have got the very same handle. I think they're about eight quid a set. Um, we actually picked these up in a packet from a charity shop, what you might call a Goodwill in America. Uh, and I've got all this set here and it cost me 70p so you don't get them sort of bargains every day but it's a nice uh, gel brush that um, so I'll use that I've got my dotting tool oh this came in a set this is my car this is just so I've got another brush to do the white bits uh, what else Hmm, that's about it, but basically I'm winging it, so we'll see what I do um, as we go along. So, right, we've got Eve here already, and uh, the only thing I've done so far is I've put pushed the tips right into the um, recess there, so that they came just to the end of the nail. I've stuck on some stiletto tips, I've clipped those off, and then they've had one coat of base coat. Base coat wise, um, what shall I use that I could have got off? Um, right, these you might get off Amazon in Savilland sets. So I've got the Savilland um, base and top. Base and top coat. So I'll give it a little base coat on these. Um, before we start doing the build, but I'm just going to file that little excess off there first. So, I'm going to use a 180, 240. I'm going to lift it away from my silicon finger because I just don't want to uh, damage it for the sake of this little edge bit. Uh, come on, first here. That's it, right, base coat. Just a 
plan as you would any other. Um, on your normal nail bed, obviously, you do your pushing back, um, getting rid of your dead skin, your dehydrator, uh, primer of choice. And then when that's dry, go in with your base coat. Look at thin layer. That's all we want. So. I've made sure I've got a nice little tacky layer for that uh, gel to hold on to. And I'll decide what I'm doing on them all as we go along. These nails always look a bit strange from the side because they kind of stand up from the nail bed, if you know what I mean. Right. I'll cure that back in a minute. Right, give me 30 seconds. I'm going to get my little uh, lamp out just to, which is this one, um, to the stage. Let's get this lot cleaned up. Um, that came in a kit. So I'm just going to do that to freeze things with a little lead. There it is. Because this self levels, I don't want to be having any of it running away while I'm doing something else. So, what I got here? Can't move this because I've stuck it to the table. So, I'm off to this corner here. Um, I'm going to scrape across the top of that and just get that tiniest little bit. And I'm doing a thin slip layer down it, which I am not going to cure. Now I'm going to get more. Oh, to wipe this brush on, what's ideal is either your palette or bits off the back of your nail forms. And uh, I'll just wipe my brush. Just wipe my brush on it like that. I don't want to risk getting any hairs off cloths. So I'm going to get a scoop. So I'm just going to scoop across the top. Like that. So it's all on one side of the brush. I'm going to start at the top and keep the nail down a bit. I've got it in front of my brush and I'm just going to go side to side. But I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. A bit more. So I recommend doing a couple of smaller bits. Uh, when you start, just so it doesn't kind of all run away with you. Reconnect it and keep this attached and walk it down. But stay attached. You can always cure and come back and put some more on if you want. Now that's going to level and a lot of it will bring it to this edge here. But you might want to just help it a little. So I'm just going to help that down a little bit, circular, there, and that's it, and it'll level itself. So I can give that a quick, just a quickie. So I'm giving that a quickie just to set it a little bit because uh, I can apply some more and start to build 
anywhere I want to build then without fear of that lot running all off the edge while I'm messing them out up at the top. When you can, you can pull up a big enough bead sort of thing and put it all on in one go. Um, which I think is probably more easy on your own hand than it is on a practice hand, because on a practice hand you're limited to movement, aren't you, a little bit. So that's that. That's set that enough. Let's move you over slightly. Yeah. Um, don't forget to move your pots when you put your lamp on. <laughs> so, can you see from the side, it's quite flat and needs more at the top. So I'm just going to get another bead. If you're smooth with that, you don't fill it with air bubbles, I've found. That little tail I've set down on there. And I'm going to go up towards the top without touching it, if I can help it. Like this. And I'm getting narrower as I get to the bottom. And then I'm going to help that bit. And then I'm going to help this side. This side has uh, more or less leveled itself. If it starts running away, you can turn your hand over and hold your finger down and that'll draw it down. That'll draw it down to your apex. And you can even get your brush and reposition a little bit if you need to. Uh, Happy with that, I think. Oh, turn around the other way. Come on, which way are you going to turn? What's that? <laughs> it's funny being on a hand. Right, uh, another cookie, another little look. You could just get some uh, little tips, you know the tips on sticks, swatch sticks and practice your procedures on that because you don't want to get it all over your fingers. So just practice with the brush. You can always use those sticks once you've done them to practice filing them, different feel of the e-file and also um, practicing your gel polish on. So it's not a waste, you're coming for about three things one stick. One thing that I think would be quite good for practicing your e-file as well is um, when you've built a nail, say in pink, do another layer in white or in a different colour and see if you can file through one colour and leave the other colour behind so you know you're not filing too hard because a lot of this will file just with a hand file. Pretty good. So I think that's a nice shape. Nice shape but I'm just a bit too thin on that side, can you see it? So, I'm still going to give that a little bit more. However, I think what I'll do... No, no, a bit more pink. I'll do the change of style on the next one. Come on, twizzle, twizzle. While you're faffing on here, just be conscious your other side could have run off. No, it hasn't, but... Yeah. A bit 
It's a bit flat at this side. I really hope you're in shot. What's that shape? It's quite good. Yeah, okay. There, so I'll just set that and then I'll give it a full cure. Right, I want to try and do a bit of marbling on uh, these. Look at that hair stuck. Yeah, try and do a little bit of marbling on this one. So I'm going to put a little slip rail on first. I'm doing this on the basis that Jill wants to follow a gel. So now, bigger scoop. I want to get this pink mostly where I want it to be. Not running that to the edge too much. I'm just going to get some white. It really is quite bloopy. Oh, God, it's trying to attach. So I'm just going to do this up and down a little bit. It's kind of melded into it. And then I'm going to smoosh it. Smoosh it a little bit. And use this to brush it to the edges. And then this, it's like a bit of white up there, I think. Do the lines however you like. Up to that. That's it. So that's that. And we'll give that a quick blast. So, I think marbling with these builds gel is probably the easiest I've found for not mashing them together. When I've tried to do marbling with acrylic, I tend to mash them together a bit. And when I do it with, uh, I, uh, not fiber gel, never had fiber gel, uh, with the acro gels, I tend to smush the colours together as well. And end up with just one sort of very pale pink looking thing um, but this one I can put clear over the top and I'm not losing the pattern so that'll do with holding it so that's that marbling with it this one I'm going to do um oh, I turned the lamp off 
this one I'm going to do the uh, nail bed but I'll just um, do my marbling on that one I'll be back in a sec right, I've done that marbling so I'm just going to use this uh, mylar and put a little bit on that marbling and uh, I've got this where, that I've kept wiping the brush on so I'm just going to wet the end of the dotting tool in the gel that's on there just to pick up some little pieces and I'll just set this at random because it's still a little bit tacky did it for about 30 seconds you could just do it for 10 seconds and then do this or do it while this is wet but um, I didn't want it to run away. Get some more. Get my wet. So I can pick it up. Oh. Right, I'll give that a full cure now. Um, well, another minute with this lamp. So I'm going to put some clear on the top of that. Alright, let's add another minute just to set that in place. There may be some little bits that do move while I'm doing this clear um, that haven't been pushed into it but I'm not bothered. Not bothered, I just want to have someone. So. Um, what's this one? So, same again. But I don't want to mess with this too much. Oh, look. Must be a wind blow, uh, a breeze blowing in. I might have to get up and shut my door in a sec. Oh, that's it. I want it in front of my brush. A breeze. <laughs> Got bloody strings all over now. That's moving to my my own. So I want clear right down to the edge. Bring that up. Come off. And then that'll settle right in. And see it disappearing. Beautiful shape, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Right, they're encapsulated, so I'm going to do this French now. Get rid of that bubble. So I'm going to do the French at the top, white at the bottom. So yeah, I'll do it this way. It's 
Ooh. And you can feed this down to more or less whatever shape you would like your smell line to be. And I'll have it to about in a bubble. About there, I think. I'm going to set that before I put any on the sides. Right, put some more on. Bend that. run itself down nicely. Now that I'm just going to bring that away. Right, I've built that as much as I want to for the minute, so I'm just going to wipe off any uh, sticky off this before I start doing any filing so that all my filing dust don't get stuck to these, uh, this clear that I've just put on. So I'm wiping that down and I'll fold that over. I'm happy with that. Fold it over again. And then left side of that one. So that's got rid of any sticky. And then once I start filing this, it's not going to stick to these. That's that. Right. So, same procedure as for any other French. I'm just going to file the front a little bit. So I'm going to use uh, 150 um, nail file and just get that line where I want it to be. We've got plenty of depth. Got plenty of depth on it. So the only problem I've got is I don't let damage my hand, my nice new hand. In fact, pull it out. Um, A slip layer that first just to wet that edge as well you're probably more skilled than me in uh, getting that French line right I 
And to be honest, I've not done it very long, have I? I should have done it longer. Hmm. Should have done it longer now. I'm going to have a lot of white. Never mind, it is what it is. Now, your white will take some curing, so I'm layering it. Plus, I want to put a bit of mylar on the white as well. So. Turn that over a minute while I get some mylar. of the mylar in the white. Oh. Buried that now. that. I'm going to be big now, back in a sec. And so now I'm going to encapsulate that um, white with some clear because I've put the mylar on. I don't want to cover the mylar. So I'm going to put some clear on top of that. There you go. Feed it up. Yeah. Round the side. Round the bend. Same on this side. I know I faff a lot, but we're a few months in, we're still learning. And uh, as long as you get your filing on point, it's amazing what you can get away with. So, just have a look at the overall shape and make sure I've covered all that mylar. The white goes higher up at one side than the other, so I failed there, but... Oops. 
thinking. If I don't get it right down here, I'll be filing the white off. You can take excess off, but right. here we are. And I'm going to give it a full couple of minutes because we're on white. Okay, so I'll file this one on camera for you and I'll do the rest off camera because you've seen me do filing before. So I'm going to use this safety bit and uh, do this one first. So, music now, Maestro, please. finish the filing and um, I'm going to have to give in and I said I was going to try and use everything I bought off Amazon now I'm going to have to give in and use my Neo top coat because there isn't enough in the other one so I think it's a lovely pink, this base one. Cover pink. Yeah. I think it's 
really nice. Let's have a look at what the marbles look like. Oh, that mylar's beautiful. I'll try and put the links below. Uh, on most of the videos, I'll, I'll leave all the links at the bottom for anything that I use regularly. Um, the hand is from, from Glitter Planet. And uh, I don't have a code or anything, but there are other YouTubers that do have some codes. Um, that you can get some money off. I like it. Like that. Must admit. Sometimes it's nice to do something a bit more subtle and not, you know, bright and flash. And I could have done the end of this just white, but I couldn't resist. Looking at that there, it would look nice with the uh, a soft white covering instead of a clear encapsulating, wouldn't it? Making it right muted. But there's just enough mylar flakes. What do you think? Think it's pretty? So. I know there's a lot of faffing involved, but that's how it is. Don't panic over it. Just do it. If you don't like it, take it off. If it's mendable with a nail file, then that's even better. No, I don't think I've pushed this nail up far enough, but I'll just do it to where we've got some pink. I've washed the hand in the sink with the nails on, so that got rid of any dust. And there they are. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll leave you with a few photos and uh, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the like if you liked it. Love you loads. Bye.